Hi guys, it's Claire Aiken from the Fiddle Leaf Fig Plant Resource Center, and today I want to tell you everything that you need to know about fiddle leaf fig propagation. And by propagation, I mean growing new plants from stem cuttings, and that's the most popular way to get new plants out of your fiddle leaf figs. It's really easy to do, and there's a lot of videos out there on how to propagate a fiddle leaf fig that really go from a tutorial perspective. But today I want to take a different approach and I want to tell you everything you need to know before you go through that process. We have a video on tutorials and we have a blog post that shows you step by steps, but there's a lot that goes into it and I get a lot of questions about propagation and so I want to cover all of the foundational basics first. And like all of my videos and everything on our site, I'm going to try to decomplicate everything and make everything really easy to understand because when I first started with houseplants, I was really intimidated by propagation and there wasn't a lot of easy to understand information out there. And so it took me a long time to actually try it when in reality, it could not be easier. It could not be simpler. You can do it. You can be successful. It's free. It's fun. It's awesome. You guys are going to love it. So let me jump right in and tell you everything that I know about propagation. So first of all, what is propagation? So propagation means the causing of plants or animals to reproduce. And so what we mean when we talk about plants is any reproduction of plants themselves. And so this could be through seeds and through germination, the natural way, how it happens in the wild. It could be, and that's what's called sexual reproduction in plants, where you have the fruit of the plant and the flower. And so fiddly figs, believe it or not, in the wild do have fruit and flowers, and they're pollinated by insects, and they reproduce the sexual way, the normal way. But what we're talking about today is actual asexual reproduction of plants, which is cloning your plant through a cutting. You just take a cutting from your plant and replant that cutting. And so plants are extremely aggressive in the wild, fiddle leaf figs especially, and so they've developed. So if they lose a piece of their plant or a leaf or a cutting, they, it can actually take root and just grow into a new plant. Um, and so it's kind of a miracle and it's awesome for us because that means you can clone your plants for free at home. And so that's what we talk about when we're talking about propagation and houseplants. And so it's really the easiest way to get new plants um, from your existing houseplant. So let's talk about the different asexual propagation methods for plants. And so this is required if you don't have seeds of the plant. And there are no commercially available ficus laurata or fiddle leaf fig seeds. And I have a whole video on the reason for that. It's kind of interesting if you're interested in, you know, seeds and why there aren't seeds available for fiddle leaf figs, check out that video. Um, but there's also some other plants out there that don't have seeds. And so if you think about in the animal kingdom, if you have a mule, which is a cross between a donkey and a horse, you actually get a sterile animal, a mule. So mules cannot reproduce with each other. The only way to get a new mule is to mate another donkey and another horse. It's the same way in the plant kingdom. And so there are specific plants that are sterile. So delicious apples, um, Bartlett pears, and seedless raisins are actually sterile. So the only way to get new ones are to asexually propagate them. And so this happens if getting seeds are a problem, like fiddle leaf figs or Bartlett pears or seedless grapes. And so what we do is there's a few different methods. So first you can grow from a cutting or a stem, either a leaf cutting or a stem cutting, or you could divide the roots of certain houseplants. So like ferns, if you take a growing um, area for ferns and you plant one fern, if with the proper care, eventually it'll fill up your whole basket or your whole container, and that's the way they kind of propagate. And so to propagate a fern, you just divide out the roots. And so you just cut it through the roots and take it out and plant one. With fiddle leaf figs, that's not the way it works. There's one plant with one trunk and one root ball. And so we have to do it through the cutting way. Um, with other plants like snake plants, they actually have pups where their little pups will come up separately, and you can just take the pup and plant it as a new plant. So Every plant is different. Um, it really depends on the plant itself, but for fiddle leaf figs, you want to do a stem cutting. That's the easiest, fastest way to reproduce them. And so let's talk about why you might want to propagate your plants. And so I really encourage you to give it a try if you haven't already. And here are some of the reasons I love propagation. First of all, it's free. And so it's a way to get, you know, five or six or 10 or 12 new plants for free. And we know that fiddle leaf figs can be a little bit expensive. And so it's a free, fun thing to do. A lot of times you need to prune your plant anyway. And so if you're going to, you have a really healthy bushy plant, if you're gonna be taking cuttings, you might as well plant them and, and start a new plant. 
it's actually faster than seeds. So even if you did have fiddle leaf fig seeds to germinate, it's faster to do a cutting. Um, they root in about eight weeks, whereas a fiddle leaf fig seed takes about 12 weeks to germinate. And it's the only way to clone your prize plant. So if you have a plant that you really love, like a variegated monstera or, you know, some plant that's really special to you, the only way to clone it is through asexual propagation. Otherwise, you would have a hybridization um, through the, the breeding process. And so if you have a plant you love and you want to clone it, then this is for you. And it's a great way to take use of your time, especially, you know, during the coronavirus pandemic, you can't necessarily go to the nursery or go shopping. And so it's something you can do safely at home. And for me, I know I take care of my plants during nap time. And so I can't leave the house when my two kids are sleeping, but I can propagate my plants. And so it's a lot of fun. Um, also, the thing I love about it is I think it's really beautiful to display. And so the way I do my propagations is I display them in glass vases or glass containers and you have your beautiful green leaf coming up. And it's a pretty thing to put around your house, almost like a cut flower. And so I think it's just a pretty thing. Even if your cutting fails, you still get to display it for a while like you would a cut flower. And so if it does, if it is successful and you grow new plants, it's really amazing. It makes you feel so empowered. It's just a little miracle in life and it's a lot of fun. And one of the things I love to do is to have houseplant propagation parties where everybody brings a cutting and then you exchange your cuttings and everyone goes home with new plants. So let me know if you'd like to see a video of that. Give us a like and be sure to subscribe if you want to learn more about um, propagation parties or things like that because we'll definitely create those videos for you. So when you decide to propagate a fiddle leaf fig, the first question you have to ask yourself is, do you want to do it in soil or water? And there's a lot that goes into that. So I personally prefer the water method. And the reasons that I prefer water is I think it's easier. In my experience, it's been easier. I think that it's the easiest way to propagate pothos, monstera, philodendron, and fiddle leaf fig. I think it's pretty to put your cutting out in a glass you know, container and it's easy. The reason that it's easy is because you can see the roots growing, whereas if you do your cutting in soil, you can't see the roots and you don't know how well your cutting is doing. And when you go to decide when it's time to plant your new cutting that has roots, you can see them clearly. And so you don't have to tug them like in a soil cutting or guess as to whether or not it's ready to be planted. You know because you can see it. I think that they propagate faster and grow new roots faster in a glass container with water. Um, and there are some studies that back that up that say it's actually faster to do uh, propagation in water than in soil. Um, like I said, you know, when you remove the plant to plant it permanently in soil, there's no damage to the roots. And you don't need to cover the container in plastic. So if you do soil propagation, it's really important to keep the whole plant moist because the soil can dry out. So a lot of times you'll see people draping plastic over, which just isn't as aesthetically pleasing. Um, the one trick to doing water propagation is you do need a liquid rooting hormone. And so we make one that works great. I'll talk about it later. But the powder rooting hormones that you see a lot will not work as well in water as they do in soil because obviously they just get diluted. So that's just something to consider. So the reasons I don't like propagating in soil is, first of all, you need sterile soil. So the biggest reason that new cuttings fail is because of fungus or bacterial infection, which is really prevalent in soil. And so you need a sterile soil. We do make one. If you're interested in our fiddly fig soil, check it out. It is sterilized, so that's an option. But um, that's just one thing to consider. You have to keep the soil moist, but not soggy. And so that's always a little bit tricky. You know, if you keep your cutting in water, it's, it's wet. But if you keep it in soil, you have to constantly be checking the moistness of the soil. Um, and so that's another consideration. You can't see the roots. So like I said, you use the tug method to see how much it's gripping. But every time you do that, you're disturbing your new roots. And then when you take it out to replant, you can actually really damage your brand new tiny roots when you're removing it to repot it. And like I said, it can take a little bit longer. So I do want to mention air layering just because it's a technique that's commonly used on fiddle leaf figs and it works. I don't particularly like it and here's the reasons why. So air layering is doing the same thing of propagating your plant where you make a cut but what you do is you wrap something moist around it so that it actually grows roots while it's still attached. So you cut halfway through the stem and then you wrap it with something like moss or something like that to keep it moist. And the cut part will actually produce roots while you're still connected to the plant. So it's kind of cool. You have the, this plant umbilical cord that is still providing nutrients to the leaves and the stem. So it's not as high of a risk of failure of your cutting, 
but it's a little bit traumatic to the plant and I don't think it's as aesthetically pleasing and you don't really need it. Um, so it's like, you know, leaving it on your plant with this umbilical cord and then your plant has more water and nutrient support. And then once it does have roots, you cut off the whole thing and plant it. So it's a way that you would propagate something that's really difficult to propagate, but it's not really necessary for fiddle leaf figs. So I say just do the cutting and, and do it in water and, and you'll be okay that way. So let's talk about when to propagate. I get that question a lot. So <laughs> the answer that you'll see online a lot is spring and summer. And the reason for that is plants are naturally growing in spring and summer. There's a lot of light and it's warmer. But you don't necessarily need to wait till spring or summer. So propagation and rooting of your cuttings is heavily dependent on heat. And so if you can keep your house warm or if you can use a bottom heat mat or a seedling heat mat for your propagation cuttings, then you could propagate in the dead of winter. It has to do with heat, not necessarily with light or with what kind of season there is. House plants grow all year like it's summer. And so that's why I feed my plants all year and I treat them as if it's summer all year long because they're in conditions indoors that make it like summer. So you don't necessarily need to wait for a certain season. What you do have to do is just make sure you keep your seedlings warm enough and so, um, or your cuttings warm enough. And so I will link to a bottom heating mat that you can use. What it is, it's just this very, very gentle heat. It won't get too hot, it won't burn your plants. You just put it underneath your cuttings. You can put it underneath water or soil cuttings and it just keeps them at a warm enough temperature where they will um, root a little bit faster and they'll do a little bit better. You could also use this for, I use it for my variegated Monstera to make it grow faster. All houseplants love heat, they love humidity, and so this is kind of a cool trick if you really want to take your plants to the next level or if you have that prized plant that you really want it to grow, um, like my variegated Monstera that started out very small, I wanted to kind of give it that bump so I have that, that heating mat underneath it that I can also use for my propagation cuttings. So let's talk about the supplies you need. And I wanna be really honest here, you don't actually need to buy anything to propagate your fiddle leaf fig. Of course, every blog post you read says you need all these supplies. And we do, you know, we make a propagation hormone that can increase your success and help it go a little faster. But you can do it on your own with nothing. All you need is a sharp pair of scissors or sharp pruning shears because you do wanna get a very, um, a nice cut. You don't wanna crush the stem of your plant when you do your cut, and so a sharp knife would do. Then you need a clean and um, hopefully clear container so that you can see the roots as they develop. And so generally, you need a healthy plant, you need shears, pruning shears or a knife that are clean, you need a clean and sterile container to put it in, you need good water, so you don't want to use water that has chlorine in it. So you could let your water sit out overnight to let the chlorine evaporate. If you have a water softener, you may want to think about buying distilled water for this process because the salts that result in water softeners can be damaging to your cutting. It can just be a little harsh of an environment for your cutting. So you need good water and then a rooting hormone will really improve your success and also decrease the time that it takes to root your new cutting. So let's talk a little bit about sterilization because I have killed <laughs> almost half of my population of houseplants one time I killed because what I did is I took pruning shears and I went through and I pruned a plant that had terrible root rot. It was a pothos that I'd had for years and it had a terrible root rot. I pruned it. I didn't sterilize my pruning shears. I guess I just didn't believe that it would transfer and it transferred to every single plant that I had cut after that. So many of my plants in my house died. It was awful. <laughs> so I don't want you to go through that. So sterilization is, it's true. It's important. Even though I didn't believe germ theory of disease, it's true. So what you want to do is you want to sterilize your shears or whatever you're making the cut with. You want to do the same for the container that you're going to put it in. Um, and one consideration, if you are using the kind of rooting powder that comes in a container that's powder, don't dip your cutting into that because you could contaminate the whole container. What you want to do is pour a little bit out and dip your cutting into um, that and then discard that at the end. And so the way I sterilize my shears is through the dishwasher. I just put them in the dishwasher and it sterilizes them. You could also use rubbing alcohol, just wipe them down with rubbing alcohol or spray them. Um, you could spray them with Lysol, or you could just quickly soak for a few minutes in 10% bleach. So whichever way you want to sterilize your, your cutting mechanism or instrument, do that. And then do the same for your container. So maybe just run it through the dishwasher and make sure it's clean and sterile. 
And then once you've sterilized it, it's time to propagate. And so the question that I get probably the most often is how do you choose, you know, which section to propagate or in where to make your cut? And so the guidance I want to give you is based on my experience. And so you don't want to choose the very, very newest growth because when you think about the way cells in your plant are differentiating, you have these stem cells that could become any type of cell and they're either gonna become a root or what's called a shoot or the growth of your plant. And so when you have brand new growth, you have cell differentiation that is going towards shoot production or growth. And so those may root a little bit slower than a slightly older um, section of your plant that actually is thinking about rooting more and the cell differentiation is going towards roots more. And But you don't wanna do a very, very old cutting either, like the bottom of your plant. Those just typically do not have the resources uh, to root. And so really a medium section. So not the newest growth, but right next to that is where you want to choose from. Not too young, not too old. What I recommend is never to do a single leaf cutting. I see a lot of people that waste a lot of time cutting a single leaf and it doesn't grow because it doesn't have that stem attached. And so even if it does root, it may never grow into a plant. You may never get more than just a leaf that's rooted. And so I recommend doing a stem cutting. And so what I mean by that is, you know, going back from the leaf to the stem, cutting off a section that has one to three healthy leaves. You don't want to cut any sections that have brown spots or root rot or any problems. Um, you want to create kind of this healthy section of one to three leaves. If you do more than that, it can just be too much stress on your, your root system that's forming to support more leaves. So one, two, maybe three leaves is kind of the sweet spot where they can take in the nutrients and the light that they need, but they're not overwhelming this non-existent root system that hasn't been created yet. Um, and so make sure you have part of the stem and then if there is any other, you know, smaller leaves or growth on the stem, take that off. It just distracts from the process. You just want your stem and your, your healthy leaves, and that's all you need so that your plant can really focus. So you want to make your cut. You want to use your sharp, sterile knife or shears like we talked about. And you want to cut on that diagonal. So the idea here is you want to expose as much as possible as the interior of the stem. And so cut on the diagonal to give as much surface area as possible where your roots can grow from. Um, I do want to caution when you're doing this cut, you may want to lay down something because fiddly figs, all ficus have sap. And as you make the cut, they will quickly, you know, be shooting out and, and excreting the sap that can be irritating to people. Certain people can actually be pretty allergic to it and it can cause even blisters on your skin and a lot of irritation on your skin if you have that reaction to it. So you may want to wear gloves. You may want to put something down. The sap will drip on your floor and, and you just don't want that. It's kind of this white sticky substance. So just be careful. Uh, one kind of bonus tip I'll give you about making your cut is there's the strategy where I'll see if I can insert some pictures where you make your cut on your stem and then you actually kind of shave off the exterior of that stem portion to expose more of the interior to give it kind of more surface area to root. And so I have seen that be successful. And so it's something that I would try on a few of your cuttings if you're interested, just to give it more surface area to develop more roots faster. So after you've made your cutting, you want to put it into your container with your clean water and make sure, you know, you don't have any chlorine in your water like we talked about. Um, and then I would add a rooting hormone, a liquid rooting hormone or a propagation promoter like the one that we have to that water. And I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and what you really want to do is you want to place it in um, some place that has a lot of light, but that has no direct light. Direct light will kill your cutting. Um, they don't need that much light. They don't need direct sunlight, but it will burn them. And the risk is that your water will become cloudy. And so the biggest problem with people failing at propagation isn't anything except that the water gets dirty and cloudy. And so what happens is bacteria or fungus grow within the water and they kill your cutting. And so to avoid that, you don't want sunlight streaming in on the water itself because that causes all this bacteria to grow. You don't want the water to be too warm and to get that direct sunlight. And so really the trick is to keep your water clean and to watch it and replace it if it gets cloudy. But I will say do not replace it every day because I see a lot of people that fail with their cuttings because they're worried about the water getting cloudy so they replace it every day and maybe their water has chlorine or maybe it's just too much of a shock. But you'll see the cutting get all brown, dark brown over it and not grow any roots. So you want to replace your water as um, rarely as possible. And that's why our propagation promoter is so cool, is that what it, first it has multiple rooting hormones so that it tells your plant to put out roots, 
But second of all, it protects against fungus and bacteria so that you don't have to replace your water all the time, which can shock and kill your cutting. And so I have propagated fiddle leaf figs where I don't replace the water at all. I do one batch of water with our propagation promoter and it holds, it doesn't get cloudy or dirty the entire time until the plant roots. And so that's kind of the trade-off that you make. You just want to be aware of it. Watch your water, make sure it doesn't get cloudy. So let's talk about rooting hormone. And so it's really interesting. If you're interested in rooting hormone, like this video or ask a comment below and I will do a whole video on rooting hormone and what it does and if you can do DIY rooting hormones at home and, and all of that. But rooting hormone is a natural hormone from a plant. And if you're like me, you don't really want hormones around you. I'm pregnant and I have two little kids and I don't like the idea of a synthetic hormone around me, but don't worry, this is a naturally occurring plant hormone. It's called an auxin, it's safe. It is not a hormone to people, it's only a hormone to plant. And so it's naturally occurring, it's totally safe. You don't need to worry about that. So uh, what it is, it's an auxin, it's derived from plants naturally. If you eat a lot of vegetables, you're ingesting these anyway. But it tells the plant to use its energy towards producing roots, not shoots like we talked about, not new growth, but roots going into the system. And so for these stem cells of the plants, it just tells them what kind of cell to become, to become a root and not a shoot. And so all cells when exposed to these high levels of auxins become root cells. So what that does for your cutting is it increases the number of roots that are grown from your cutting. It causes the roots to be created faster and it creates stronger roots. And so it'll increase your success rate of your cutting just because your roots are growing stronger and faster and there's more of them. But also because most rooting hormones uh, contain that antibacterial or antifungus that I'll talk about in a minute. And so even if you had a rooting hormone on its own, um, it would increase your success of getting your cutting to root. Um, but also most rooting hormones contain some kind of uh, antifungal property and that's what really helps your rooting do well is the lack of bacterial and fungus infestation because that's the most common cause of root cuttings to fail. And so you really want both. You want multiple rooting hormones as well as um, you know that antibacterial, antifungal. And so if you have one of those, you know, old cheap powders of rooting hormone, double check the expiration date. They do expire. And so typically it's a three to four year shelf life. So just make sure they're not expired because they can lose potency over time. Um, one thing I will say is the reason that we developed our rooting hormone to be a liquid is because they absorb better than powders. And so also you can use it in water propagation. And so if you're in the market for a new rooting hormone, I really recommend going with a liquid because I think that they work better. And so I'll talk about our propagation promoter and I'll throw in a little image of it. I'm so excited about this product. It's so cool. What it is, is it includes several different rooting hormones. We worked with the top fiddle leaf fig growers as well as propagation specialists to include all these different rooting hormones that the fiddle leaf fig will respond to really well. And so you use one teaspoon in every two cups of water for your water propagation. So if you do, you know, a small container, you just put two teaspoons in, just squeeze it in and then put your plant in and um, that's how you use it. For soil, you would just mix the propagation promoter into the water. So you'd use one teaspoon in at least one cup of water and then pour it over your soil cuttings. So it is derived naturally from sea kelp. So you don't have to worry about the scary, the weird hormone word. It's just a naturally occurring uh, plant auxin and sea kelp. It's ground up, it's put into this. It has a lot of different ingredients in it that will protect your cutting from bacterial or fungus and infestations. And so that's so important. And so it's really a cool product because it's a gel. And when you put it in, you can see the gel kind of sits around the cutting itself and protects it. And like I said, you can go weeks without changing the water because you have this protective gel around your cutting that is kind of sitting there promoting the rooting and also protecting your cutting from any infestation. Um, and so it's a really fun product to use. You can actually kind of see it working and it does decrease the time to your, your stem actually developing roots. So let's talk about, you know, how long it takes to do your propagation. So I think one of the reasons people say fiddle leaf figs are hard to propagate is <laughs> they're not, <laughs> except that they are harder than some other plants. So pothos, I think, is probably the, the easiest thing to propagate. You could cut ivy, actually, maybe even easier than pothos. You can cut ivy and just put it on your sink, and in a week, you'll have roots. Um, but with fiddle leaf figs, it can take six to eight weeks. And so that's why it's relatively harder than other plants because all of that time you have a risk of failure from bacterial or fungus or whatever. 
So after about four weeks with a successful propagation, you should be able to see these tiny little white popcorn spots, and those are the beginnings of the root bud. Uh, within six to eight weeks, you should have enough roots where you can replant your cutting. So how do you know when to replant? So at that point, I like to say you want your roots to be at least an inch long, maybe between one and two inches. But what you also want to look out for is that there's a lot of new roots. So once your first root is, you know, two inches long, wait, wait until there's more. You want a good mix of different roots coming out one to two inches long and the thickness of about a wire is a good bet. And then it's ready to, to plant it in soil. Keep your soil moist and you should have a successful new plant. So once you plant your cuttings, here's kind of the basics on that. I can do a whole video on that if you're interested. Um, so you want to use a small container. If you use too big of a container, it will actually stay too wet and it will kill your new plant. And so use a small container. What I mean there is two to four inches in diameter. Use a fast draining soil. Make sure it's sterile. Um, keep it evenly moist. Consider when you use, using one of those bottom heat mats and then fertilize after about two weeks so that your new plant has nutrients to start growing because at this point we want it to, you know, keep growing the roots, but really start growing the actual growth so that it can become a bigger plant, take in more resources and the whole cycle continues. And then once you're in your two to four inch container, um, just check it, make sure it's not root bound in a couple of weeks, maybe, you know, a couple months, it will be ready for a bigger container and you keep potting up as it grows. And so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on everything you need to know about propagation. This is such a cool thing to do when you have your new cuttings and you plant them, you can give them away to friends, you can keep them. They will last a lifetime. They will last multiple human lifetimes. Um, so I have some plants from my grandmother who, you know, started in the 50s and 60s growing houseplants. And so these plants can outlive us and it can just be such a rewarding experience to, you know, grow and clone your favorite plants and give them away or keep them for your collection. It's just so awesome. Don't be intimidated. Give it a try. Let me know if you have any questions and I can do a part two video about all of your questions if I didn't cover everything. Um, and then I'll link all the products I mentioned in the related videos below. Thank you so much for watching and happy growing. Thank you.